Today, of course, is Mother's Day, and it is a day when we should be recognizing and honoring our moms, uh, because after all, as it says in Proverbs 15, foolish children despise their mother. And we're not foolish, are we? We honor our moms, and rightfully so, because they are special. And I would argue moms are special for at least these two reasons. First, moms are special because their job is hard. Being a mom is difficult. In fact, can you imagine what a posting might look like if you were trying to fill the position of mother out in the workplace? I mean, if there was a posting, you know, help wanted ad, what would it look like? It might sound something like this. Wanted, someone to be on call 24 hours a day, never have a day off, no sick leave, no paycheck, no pension, no promotions, must have infinite patience, excellent nurturing skills, boundless energy, and inexhaustible love. Plus, the applicant may be required to take on a second job to help make ends meet. Yeah, right? That, that, that's tough. It's tough being a mom. So moms are special because their job is hard. But moms are special, secondly, because their job is so important. Seriously, you know, moms are on the cutting edge of the people development business, right? They are shapers of human beings. And moms, let me just tell you, the nurturing that you provide, the love that you offer, the encouragement that you give, the teaching you supply, the dreams you instill, the faith you help develop, that's incredibly important, Thank you. In fact, would you guys just thank moms right now? Let's just thank those moms. This, they do an amazing job. Based on at least those two reasons, though, my guess is that all of you here, all of you watching online right now, my guess is that you want not just your mom, but all moms to succeed. So to help with that, I'm going to share with you some of the more basic needs that a lot of moms have. And it's coming from this book. It comes from this book. This book came out a couple of years ago uh, from Elisa Morgan and Carol Kekendall, What Every Mom Needs. And, and, and in this book, it doesn't give an exhaustive list by any means, but it provides us with some insights that I think can help us meet the basic needs of a lot of the moms here today. All right. And, and just to help you, when I share each of these needs, I have an object that I'm going to put up here as well, uh, just to help you remember what they are. All right. Now, here's the homework for moms. When you go home, I want you to look over that list and determine which needs are being met and which ones aren't. Dads, kids, the rest of you, we want moms to succeed, right? So I want you to look over that list as well and see which needs you could maybe help meet for the mom or moms, in some of your cases, in your life. For example, one basic need that many moms have today is the need for significance. And moms, let me just go on record and say that what you do is absolutely significant, is absolutely essential. You play a huge role in the physical, psychological, emotional, spiritual development of your kids. Author Linda Weber says it this way, Every problem solving, grocery shopping, homework helping, meal cooking, laundry washing, boo boo soothing, gift buying, shoe tying, fight breaking, carpooling mom has a strategic pivotal role in our society. It's a calling, it's a responsibility, it's an honor. And moms have every reason to feel good about who they are and what they do. And that is so true. So to represent this first basic need, I have this. <laughs> A trophy. And I have this trophy because I think there are times when moms wonder, does what I do even make a difference? Right? Does it even count? And while my guess is that many moms don't want or need a trophy, it is important that we acknowledge all that they do and that it is significant. So dads, kids, the rest of you, okay, not just today on this Mother's Day, but every day, make sure you affirm the mom or moms in your life for the mothering that they do and let them know it does matter. Okay, they are significant. Second basic need that a lot of moms may have is the need for identity. Sometimes moms ask the question, who am I? 
And they ask that question, especially when their kids are little, because then they can kind of lose their sense of identity, right? They're so wrapped up in raising their kids that by the time the kids then grow up and leave, they're like, well, I've been a mom all these years. Now what? Right? They've lost that identity. So to represent that, I have a fingerprint. Because dads, kids, it is really important for you to let the mom or moms in your life know that their value, their identity as a person is not just them as a mom, right? Like a fingerprint, they are unique individuals masterfully created by the God of this universe, A third basic need that many moms have is the need for growth. Moms can become so busy nurturing their children that they can put their own personal growth and development off to the side and ignore it. And and I'll tell you right now, if you don't keep growing and developing, you'll become stagnant and uninspired. And moms, that's not good for you. It's not good for your family. So to represent that, I have this healthy growing plant. And dads, kids, in a very gentle, loving way, let me just challenge you to encourage the moms in your life to see the need, to continue to grow, to see the need for them to continue to develop and become the person that God has made them to be. Another a basic need that many moms have is the need for intimacy. And by that, I mean, moms want to be accepted and understood. Okay. They, they, they do. And especially when they have younger preschool age kids in this book, the authors say it this way. Intimacy is being understood. It is not being judged for what you did wrong this time. It is not being told what you could do differently next time. It's not being corrected, interpreted, or fixed. Intimacy is being understood, sometimes when you don't even understand yourself. So moms need intimacy in the sense that they need to be able to talk through what they've gone through, talk about it with somebody else. And yes, sometimes that can be the husband. The husbands can certainly understand. But I also think it helps to have maybe another woman, another mom. And so to represent that, I have these two coffee mugs just to represent the value of sitting down with another person who can get what you as a mom are going through and understand you, okay? Just to do life at a deeper level. So moms, please see the need to have this this intimate, deep relationship with at least one other person who can listen to you and understand you. All right, a fifth basic need for many moms is a need for instruction. Many moms, or many women, when they get into the mothering process, don't have a clue what it means to be a mom. They don't know what their marriage should look like. Uh, they don't know how to manage their time or stay on top of their finances. They may not even understand their value and identity as a woman. And when they become moms, there are just a whole slew of questions Right. When, you know, how do I get my little one to sleep through the night? You know, how, when they get a little bit older, how do I deal with temper tantrums? And when they get into school, how much screen time is too much? And what about sibling rivalry and conflict? And when they get into high school, how much independence do you give them? And how do you deal with rebellion? Right. The list just goes on and on and on. So to represent this particular need, I have a cell phone, because my guess is that, and not to dial 911, but my guess, <laughs> my guess is that moms, you know of several other godly Christian moms who have been there, done that, right? In your circle of friends, you might know somebody like that. And if so, it, just understand what you were going through, another mom has already gone through. So give them a call and and. Continue the instruction, the importance of just learning from these other moms who've been around the block. How do you do this, right? Ask for guidance and input and and insight and wisdom. It just makes life that much easier for you. All right, sixth, a sixth need that many moms have is the need for help. And moms, please do not feel like it's wrong or bad to ask for assistance. It's not wrong or bad to ask for help. And to represent this, I have a life preserver, as I'm sure there are times, right? But it refers to somebody who's willing to throw out a lifeline to you as a mom, especially when you feel like you're drowning in everything you have to do. 
And, and maybe an example of a lifeline that some other moms can provide for you is you getting together with moms of small children and, and maybe saying, hey, you know what? If I babysit your kids tonight, would you be willing to babysit my kids another night? Right? There's no money exchange. You just kind of you know, have this agreement. Or maybe you can ask your husband to do something um, that, you know, you used to do that, you know, is easy for him to do. Or, or maybe you ask a neighbor or uh, maybe a, a, an extended family member. Maybe you even ask your kids if they're old enough to help. The point is, don't be afraid to ask for help, right? Don't be afraid to ask for help and, and uh, um, make sure that you, you uh, take time to do that. And moms, I'm sorry, dads and kids, I don't, I should not have to tell you. Always be looking for those opportunities to help the mom or moms in your life. All right, number seven, seventh basic need that many moms have is the need for recreation because moms need time for themselves too. Problem is that they are so used to putting the needs of everybody else first that they feel guilty if they take time for themselves. And, and moms, understand, taking a break is not selfish. It's self-preserving. If you don't take a break, those moms who don't take a break, for those moms, it, the, the, the worry, the stress, the exhaustion can be overwhelming. Okay, so to represent the need to take a break, I've got a book. And, and it doesn't have to be a book. It could be a set of golf clubs. It could be a tennis racket. It could be a bike. It could be, you know, exercise. Uh, you could sign up for a sports league or take up a hobby. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. A book fit. That's it. Okay. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you moms take time for yourselves because it's good for you and it's good for your marriage and your kids, right? All right, and an eighth basic need that many moms have is a need for perspective. Uh, sometimes the demanding little details of life can crowd out the big picture. And, and what happens is in this you know, struggle to balance everything, moms lose their sense of perspective. And they can buy into myths of mothering. Like this myth, if you control everything, life works. Okay, that's a myth because you can't control everything. Really, the better idea is to just learn to go with the flow of the way things come your way. Or how about this myth? You should do everything right and everything right now. (laughs) Another myth, right? you, You can't do everything right now, but you can do what's important right now. And what's important, moms, is not for you to be super mom, but just to make sure that your family knows and loves Jesus, right? Or how about this myth? The only way you're going to make it is to simply grin and bear it until it gets better. Ah, Another myth. Each day is a gift from God. So enjoy each day. Savor those fun moments in life because I guarantee before you know it, boom, they're gone. So enjoy those moments. And to represent this eighth particular need, I have a pair of binoculars, right? Just to help moms keep things in focus, keep things in perspective. Okay, Not everything has to be done today. One final basic need that many moms have is a need for hope because there are times when moms wonder if there is any hope. I came across this online. I looked for an author. I could not find who it was from, so I apologize, but this really paints a good picture of what I'm talking about. Look at this. Your husband just lost his job, and you're not sure how you'll pay the bills. Your mother is sick and needs you, but you have two little ones who also need you. You're pregnant again and wonder in your heart whether you can cope with another child. Your marriage is stale and cold. You, your best friend, is moving far away, and you wonder how you'll make it without her. Your house is a mess and falling apart. You feel like you can't do it anymore. Life isn't turning out like you expected, and there's not enough of you to handle it. Moms, at those moments, you need hope. And I'm here to tell you, hope is available. And to represent that, I have this. It's a cross. The cross of Jesus Christ. Of course, that hope isn't just for you moms. It's for all of you. True lasting hope is found in Jesus, the God of the universe. Here's what's really cool. All of these basic needs that I just talked about, God provides an answer for every single one in his word. For example, remember significance. Okay. Well, God's answer to the need for significance is found in Romans 5 verse 8. God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That is how much you matter to God. You are so significant to him that he was willing to come to this earth, become a human being, and die for you. 
to die, to pay the punishment that you deserve for everything you've done wrong. Jesus went to the cross so that you could be forgiven and restored and adopted into his family and guaranteed an eternity with him. And while this truth, of course, applies to everybody, moms, please understand, if you're struggling with significance, you have a God who loves you and who died for you. That's how significant you are. What about the need for identity? Well, God's answer for that is found in Psalm 139, verse 14, which says, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You bear the image of God. He loves you unconditionally, right? Which means there isn't anything you can do that's going to cause God to love you any less or any more than he does right now. So moms, God loves you, but not because you're a good mom. He loves you. Because you're you. Third, what about the need for growth? God's answer for that is found in 2 Peter 3, verse 18. But grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God wants you to spiritually grow and gain godly um, wisdom and maturity through his word. And God provides opportunities for all of you to grow, whether it's here in a worship service or in your own personal time of devotion or in a group Bible study. Those opportunities are there. Take advantage of them. Fourth, what about the need for intimacy? God's answer for that is found in Psalm 139, verses 1 and 2. Oh, Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise, you perceive my thoughts from afar. God knows everything about you. Oh, yeah, he knows everything. Your sins, your failures, your mistakes. And yet he still loves you and he still forgives you. And again, that's the, that's the whole point of the cross. So that you, so that we could have an intimate relationship with our heavenly father. A God, by the way, who accepts you and wants to be your most trustworthy companion. What about the need for instruction? God's answer to that is Psalm 119, verse 105. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. God's handbook for your life is called the Bible. And that book can inform you and train you and instruct you and guide you in everything that you need to do to succeed here in this life, including being a mom. What about the need for help? God's answer for that is in Philippians 4. I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. God is always available with the help that you need when you need it, right? So if you need, you know, patience, sometimes you need that. If you need stamina, if you need courage, if you need comfort, if you need direction, God will always be there to give you that help. What about recreation? Jesus says in Matthew 11, verse 28, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And while Jesus will certainly give rest for your souls, he also can provide rest for all the other areas of your life too. Or how about the need for perspective? Again, God provides the answer. Look at this, very familiar verse, John 3, 16. Jesus says, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Through faith in Jesus, you are forgiven and you have a relationship with God now and forever. I don't know about you, but to me, that sure puts things into perspective, puts everything else into perspective. And what about hope? God's answer for our need for hope is found in Titus 3, where it says, God saved us not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs having the hope of eternal life. While you can have hope through faith in Jesus Christ, the hope that one day you're going to spend all of eternity with him in heaven, which is good, I want you to also understand that between now and heaven, you can also have hope, knowing that when your life is turned upside down or inside out, God is right there with you every step of the way, encouraging you, guiding you, loving you, carrying you, empowering you, whatever. He will be there for you. Well, let me close by reading this little quip from Danielle Dalton, who lives out in Costa Mesa, California. And let me share this, especially to you moms, because I just want you to understand, as God is leading you, whether you know it or not, you are leading your kids. Listen to what she says. 
It was a busy day in our home. But then with five children and another one on the way, every day is a bit hectic. On this particular day, however, I was having trouble doing even routine chores, all because of one little boy. Len, who was three at the time, was at my heels no matter where I went. Whenever I stopped to do something and turned back around, I'd trip over him. Several times they suggested fun activities to keep him occupied. But he simply smiled an innocent smile and said, oh, that's all right, mommy. I'd rather be in here with you. Then he continued to bounce happily along behind me. After stepping on his toes the the fifth time, I began to lose my patience. When I asked him why he was acting this way, he looked at me with his sweet green eyes and he said, well, mommy, in Sunday school, my teacher told me to walk in Jesus' footsteps, but I can't see him, so I'm walking in yours. I know, isn't that, oh, man, that's so sweet. Moms, I share this with you because I want you to understand, as you follow Jesus, your kids are following you. Know that. And know that as they follow you, they will see God, the God of the universe, meeting all of your needs. And they will put two and two together and recognize he can meet their needs too. And that's powerful. So moms, thanks. Seriously, thanks for being you. Let me just challenge you in a couple of ways. Today, let me, first of all, change, uh, challenge you to look over the list if you're a mom and see what needs aren't being met. If some are, praise God. Give thanks to God for those. But if some aren't, sit down with your family and talk about how that can, um, how you can uh, rectify that. Second, very closely related, look for ways if you're a dad or kid to fulfill the needs on the list. Remember, our goal, guys, kids, is to help moms, all moms succeed. So talk through that. Where can we help mom? And then third, give God thanks for meeting all your needs. I know it's Mother's Day. I know we want to honor the moms who are here as well as who are in our hearts. But let's not forget to also honor the God of the universe who loves us, who blesses us, and who doesn't just meet a particular need, but all of our needs in Jesus. Amen? Amen. All right, let's pray about that. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for the gift of moms. Thank you for the contribution they've made in our lives whether it's reminding them of their significance or their identity as your child, whether it's growing or developing close, intimate relationships, whether it's learning from others or getting the help that they need, whether it's taking time for recreation, keeping things in perspective, or simply being filled with the hope that you bring. Help us, dear Father, to always be there to support not just our moms, but each other, and to see that in you all things, all our needs are met. We love you. We pray this in Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen.